Hello everyone, this is Alex USA Days. Uh, so today we're going to continue our Learn Quality Assurance from Scratch uh, playlist and today we will talk about Agile. So um, we're still on module two where we talk about different development methodologies and we will have some more to cover before we go into module three and talk about types of tests and test plans. Um, but um, let's get into it. All right, so what is Agile? Agile is a relatively new software development methodology that was established in 2001. Agile Manifesto uh, was created by a group of developers that uh, came up with new approach how to develop software. Now we will cover and uh, look at Agile Manifesto and Agile principles once we're done with the slides for Agile. Um, but uh, you need to understand that the world has changed since Waterfall appeared. Uh, the initial companies were big corporations that had a lot of resources, scientists on board. So developing software in Waterfall way was uh, perfectly normal for them. Now, since then, there are a lot of more uh, startups, a lot of more coding that happens from your basement or from your, uh, you know, from your garage. So a lot of new companies uh, appear that can't really follow waterfall approach. They need something really fast, something that can be changed uh, easily. So this is how uh, Agile came to be. Now, Agile also came with a concept, well, within Agile, there's a concept of MVP, which stands for Minimum Viable Product. Um, and that means that the team can deliver something that has minimum functionality and just provides proof of concept that the program actually works. And then for the direction of product can be adjusted if needed. So once the MVP is out, uh, then the startup may be in can add, get more money from the investors or they can see how it will respond with the customers or stakeholders and if there are any changes needed. Um, and then since Agile appeared, a lot of different branches came out of Agile. Uh, we will talk about Scrum, we will talk about shift right, shift left and other approaches. Um, but they all have the same approach of continuous incremental improvement through small and frequent releases. That's the core idea of Agile. Uh, there's also uh, no exit like in Waterfall. So as long as product is viable and it, in, it is in demand, it will adapt and improve. Uh, backlog, essentially list of features to work on is never empty. Things are always getting added in there. Um, I can give you an example of YouTube, right? So when YouTube appeared, you can remember they have all those changes every other month or every half a year, like design changed the application. Then from just the web application, now we have YouTube on our phone. Then there's also YouTube Studio, YouTube Music, all those other services around YouTube. Now YouTube also has a micro blog with like a wall where you can write your thoughts. And then uh, there is also shorts instead of like long videos and a lot of things that are uh, happening with YouTube more and more stuff keeps on adding. So as long as product is on the market, as long as it's used, it's making money, uh, you know, features will get added and it will get improved. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So Agile, instead of working on complete product uh, in one large cycle like Waterfall from the start to the end to the monolith product being pushed out into the world where it stays there with like uh, rare updates and upgrades, uh, essentially Agile has small feature cycles and those iterations starts with epic or essentially the idea right uh what we're going to bring and epic includes multiple stories within it that you know uh, that have describing behavior of what this feature should do so for example you want to add a new type of an account for youtube like a manager's account that can manage other youtubers or something like that so you'll have to create a profile you have to create special login so this will go under the epic and then those epic will include stories and stories will have your uh, brd or prd which is like business requirement or uh, product requirements documentation uh, which is essentially story description 
app, which is essentially is requirements for that features. So Epic is full of stories. Those stories then go into the develop. Once the develop is done, testers test it. Uh, then it is deployed. Then there is a review of the sprint of the cycle of development for you know the set of features. And then the new sprint starts. New Epic brought in and the cycle repeats itself. So Classic Agile can have release cycle anywhere from two weeks to two months as long. Uh, it may have different departments and a standard hierarchy like with managers in the QA department with a set of QAs and then there's developers department with a developer manager or director. Uh, but Classic Agile is still flexible. So it does not mean there's there are no documentation or processes in place in the Agile environment, but the focus is on continuous improvement of work and product over comprehensive documentation. In reality, though, you will find a mix of different approaches called one or another way, uh, but with elements from other different approaches. So, you know, you can actually see uh, some mix of waterfall practices and agile. And again, different teams may be using different approaches or everyone said that they use Scrum or agile, but, you know, different team has something else going on for them. So from company to company, from project to project, from place to place, uh, you will see some differences uh, in Agile, Waterfall, Scrum, all other development methodologies. They might have the same name, but, you know, normally it's just a mix of things, okay? Um, all right, so what are the advantages of Agile? So Agile has high level of communication between business and development. So there's always conversation happening in Slack and emails. There's really not a lot of documentation so a lot of it you know based on communication and uh, your requirements can get updated your stories can get updated depending on the communication so there's a lot of talk going on right business talk and development talk um, there's also another advantage of agile customer satisfaction as key indicator of product success so because there's a lot of feedback there's that loop between stakeholders or customers and then uh, development uh, team so there's always or business team and uh, stakeholders and development and clients and customers uh, and and users so uh, there's always this, you know, understanding, okay, if this was a good release, if this was a successful feature, what is the feedback? Uh, are customers happy? Are customers satisfied? Um, why? One of the reasons why Amazon got so big as they got today, the core idea of their business is actually around customer satisfaction. That's why we have Prime. That's why we have like next day delivery, which comes with Prime membership. So um, customer satisfaction, that's why it's so easy to return items. Customer satisfaction is in the core of the business. Um, so to get and the same thing was agile principle. Adaptability to unexpected changes and market challenges. So if you're a competitor trying to take uh, your market and they come up with some, you know, new features in their product, you can quickly change your pipeline and implement the same features to keep your customers in place. So adaptability is a big thing. If testing is implemented on all stages and it is implemented properly, another advantage is better quality of product. It's not always the case. Um, I, I've seen... This disadvantage of this because there are many teams that don't, you know, uh, they're responsible for their part, like front end for front end part, back end for back end part. Sometimes you will have problems and discover issues uh, when you start bringing things together, like integration part wouldn't be that great. So testing has to be implemented properly in order to increase uh, the quality of the product. Um, and the last one, but not least, is continuous improvement of products. So as long as the new features added, uh, new technologies used, new stuff is built and feedback is great from the customers, the product will improve. Okay. Disadvantage of uh, just of agile. So it's not always good to have agile. Some some things that require robust documentation in place. Uh, reg industries that are regulated uh, that have certain standards you have to follow that has certain like procedures and certifications in place, um, like being big bank and financial industries, maybe some like medical stuff or some government stuff, uh, mil some military stuff. You know th those might not work well in agile. 
setup. So it doesn't serve well in regulated industries. Um, well, at least from my experience. Um, also, frequent changes, which is also called context switching in the industry, can lead to fast burnouts. So imagine you're working in a project and you've been thrown from one team to another, from te one technology stack to another, from one product to another. Over time, you know, your project gets shut down, you start working another one, this one gets shut down because there's market change. So it can lead to fast burnouts. Uh, so, you know, it can be really challenging environment if there are a lot of changes and you feel like you're not really contributing. Um, limited documentation or no documentation at all, uh, that also can happen at, in Agile. And source of truth can be someone's expertise or even an opinion. So you wouldn't have somewhere to go and actually read about the product or the feature, how it should work and or what is already implemented. You'll have to talk to people to figure things out. And it's not always the best approach. Okay. Uh, and uh, fragmented delivery can lead to gaps. And that's what I've talked about in testing. Fragmented delivery can lead in gap it can lead to gaps in integration and unexpected bugs uh, on release. So if there's only front-end team that says we're responsible for front-end, hey, our tickets are done, and then back-end says, hey, we're responsible for back-end, our tickets are done, and then, you know, they kind of bring their back-end, front-end together, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a mismatch in API calls, and there's just, you know, things are not working. So this part, you know, it has to be, integration has to be tested well. Okay, so this is mostly it. Uh, about Agile. So let's go and take a look at this uh, manifesto. All right, so what is Agile manifesto? So a team of developers came together in 2001, they're the names of them uh, right here, and they created this manifesto that says, we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value. And that's the focus of Agile, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there is value in items on the right, we value the items on the left more. And on this webpage, you can read about uh, principles of Agile. You can see all the people that sign Agile over methodology over the years all the way up to 2016 you can you know you can can explore this webpage it's pretty cool um okay so that's it about agile hopefully you enjoyed the video uh hit like and subscribe if you want more content on qa more uh, lessons are coming in the future and thanks for watching and bye bye